A very good morning to all of you. Um, welcome to what is the third Sunday during the holy season called Lent. Today our theme is stress and our faith, stress and our faith. And uh, I want to remind you that on Monday, Thursday, I think that's April the 14th or 15th, whatever that Thursday is, we will take communion. That will be the first time I think we've had communion in a physical kind of way. Golly, I don't know, a year, year and a half, I had no idea. But uh, And if you want to come but do not want to take the physical part, at least you can be here in terms of the remembrance. And I apologize that the only reason I've done it that way is um, trying to protect all of us as best we can in terms of uh, what goes on with our with our health. I guess, uh, yeah, Bill, tell us what you're thinking. I didn't mean anything big, but I, I want to say that it's a beautiful day the Lord made. It's a little on the cold side. It's a little nippy, but if you look outside, it's just the way it ought to be. It is, it is March and it is Ohio, it's Columbus, Ohio, yeah, no, you're right, and, but yeah, it's still a great day to be alive, um, you know, a lot of us have lost loved ones, but, you know, it, one of the lessons we learn is what a gift life is, you know, what a gift life is, so yeah, hope you're, but I want you all to stay as healthy as, uh, as you can, um, I had open heart surgery back in, let's see, 1990. And almost every morning uh, when I get up, um, sometimes even in the shower or my way when I was still doing the church down that way, I would have a simple prayer, Bill. It would go something like, um, uh, Lord, uh, I thank you for the gift uh, of another day. Forgive me when I haven't been living the way I should. I trust that you will forgive me. I trust that you are my savior. I thank you for going to the cross from an old fellow like me, amen. And I, you know, that you may think I'm just, but I did that just about every morning. Um, sometimes I'm going into Wendy's or something that's noon and I haven't remembered my prayer. Now that is the truth. But uh, yeah, that's uh, thanks, Bill, and I, I I appreciate your reminding us uh, uh, of that. Um, let me let me begin now, and I want to do a little meditation for you. Uh, I'd like for you to just sort of sit back, and we're going to talk about Jesus for a moment. One day uh, he was born. Like every baby, he probably cried. One day he was a boy, and like every boy, he probably laughed, and he played. One day he was baptized. Like many, he sensed a new beginning. One day he was a dreamer, preaching about the kingdom of God. One day he was a listener. Hearing about the frustrations and the fears of others. Oh, one day he was a nature lover, walking by the lilies of the field and seeing the birds of the air. One day he was a healer, touching the blind, the lame, and the deaf. One day he was a friend, talking to the lonely even to the leper. One day he was a teacher instructing the 12 disciples. One day he was a food distributor serving bread to all the hungry. One day he was a crusader turning over the tables of money changers. One day he was a storyteller impressing others with parables. One day he was at prayer, going away from others to be alone with you. One day he enters a city, coming to receive honor and hurt. One day he was betrayed, accused, arrested, and beaten. 
One day he dies on a cross. Help us again, Lord, to become disciples, to take up our crosses, and to follow love wherever it shall lead us in this week ahead. Let me have a prayer now. God, we, we gather as your people. And yes, we're all marked by sin, weighted down from carrying the burdens of our hearts and our consciences. We have tried keeping silence, hoping our, our loads might in a magical way be lifted. And hoping that if we leave and forget, it will go away. Lord, we cannot forget what's going on in the world. We pray for the Ukraines, that they may find peace. We pray for world peace selfishly that we are so concerned about. So, loving Lord, we know you long to make us dancers of those with heavy feet, singers, of those who have lost their voices. So here in worship today, Peach Blow, God of mercy, may we come to know the joy of forgiveness. And as we turn to you this morning, may we feel the presence of your love. Lord, we shout out, thanks for the gift of life. In Christ's name we pray, amen. We've got a couple of lessons this morning and then from 32. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Blessed is the man whom the Lord impugns no iniquity. And who in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I declared not my sin, my body wasted away. Though my groaning all day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. Thy strength was dried up as by the heat of the summer. I acknowledge my sin to thee, and I have not hid from it. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then thou didst give and forgive the guilt of my sin. Um. There is a number here I want you to remember for a second, 3179. Got it? 3179. And if you're a chemist, it's uh, called dilettant, dilettant compound. Now, I sort of liked chemistry in high school and college, but I had no idea what that was when I first uh, did some research. 3179, dilettant compound. Have any idea? If someone read my sermon title, Larry, you would know, wouldn't you, Larry? Tell tell us the sermon title. Can you remember, Larry? Can somebody else remember it? I almost brought a demonstration. I went to two places looking for it, but it was running from six to ten dollars for a little ball of it. Silly buddy. And I said, well, they're gonna have to listen to it without me spending $10. And I even went to Walmart, which is supposed to be cheap. <laughs> you remember Silly Buddy. Um, one of the things we used to do on Sunday with the kids, and we'd get it all flattened out. And then we'd lay the comics. Remember the actual one? We couldn't wait to have the comics on Sunday morning in our, our Columbus paper. We'd lay it out, and then we'd press it down. And then the kids would all try to examine who had the best comic to uh, look at. But in the meantime, in the 80s and the 90s, Silly Putty grew up. It grew up a whole lot. Um, I first discovered it when I had a staff meeting at Maple Grove. And um, we had a congenial group. You'll have to understand, and please don't take this the wrong way, but it is the truth. I was usually the only male there, but sometimes there was another male, but I had a whole flock of women in there. Got the picture? About an hour. 
And one of the women got so um, anxiety written that she would begin to bring silly putty every week to staff conferences. I'd watch her. She was a person that Bob graduated from Duke University, by the way, or the and one of the things that happened was that everybody watched her squeeze the silly buddy instead of listening to what we were talking about. I have a couple of friends that are therapists, and I, I said to them, do they still use silly putty? And he said, yeah, not like it was 20 years or so ago. Psychiatrists, psychologists, school psychologists, uh, therapists sometimes use silly putty and maybe you have too, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's sort of a release valve. It's back again with a kind of vengeance, a little ball of putty. We call it silly putty. But the stuff used to come, remember, in sort of those egg-shaped containers? Well, I guess I'm the only one old enough to remember all that. But it is back again. Putty. Apostles claim a decent kind of painful, massage, manipulated thing to help people often through the work week. It's a remarkable thing some folks say to relieve stress. The problem with putty is that it wears out pretty quickly. Like most stress solutions in life, putty gets used up. It wears thins, and then you have to go back to the putty pusher at Walmart or wherever. I'm getting away from it, Keith. I heard that too. Sorry about that, folks, if that came off a little loud. Let the psalmist here have a word this morning about stress. He says, if you have a debt and your debt is forgiven by the one holding the note, hey, you're a happy person. If you uh, make a bonehead mistake and someone conveys for you that you're still a happy person. If you had a reputation for trouble in the past, but your friends refuse to carry it over into the present relationship, you are happy and you are a blessed person. This is not putty power. This is personal power, a kind that comes only through the forgiveness that we know in Jesus Christ. Of course, you can try to find happiness or as we use the term today, blessedness in other ways. The psalmist admits as much. He says there is probably a time when it's more important for us just to be quiet. Some of us may recall mom or dad. It was my mother would just say, tell you my middle name now, Spencer, be quiet. <laughs> I knew it was serious when Spencer was told to be quiet. But representing life itself, Christ has given to us an opportunity to feel forgiveness. So, Rather than repression, the scripture says we should try confession. Rather than repression, we should try confession. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you forgive the guilt of my sin. That's also in Psalm 32. He also admits to being stubborn, of which we you know, we have a hard time recognizing what stubbornness is about. But just in case there's one person here, perhaps the person that's stubborn is also in the state of denial. The scripture says, if you read it through, it's sort of funny almost. It says, do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it will stay near you. But that didn't work. He yielded instead to the one who instructs him, meaning Christ, to the one who teaches him, means Christ, 
who counsels him and who watches over him. Those are the way that the Lord tries to deal with us. But for the psalmist, that is really the only approach that works. And the outcome is huge. Steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Who trust in the Lord. It's not that simple, is it, folks? For the psalmist, well, no wonder he's dancing with joy. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy. All you upright in heart. You know, dancing has been throughout peanuts, a kind of time of celebration. Can you remember that? Remember how especially Snoopy would be dancing around? Well, it, it was in the Bible, too. In the center of this reflection, blessedness is what the psalmist suggests. He has found the secret being of being protected, being safe about life itself. It's not about staying silent, folks. It's not. It's about facing our problems. It's not about pretending, but facing our problems, but not facing our problems alone, facing them with our Lord. The soul is protected when it is most vulnerable. When it opens itself by way of confession and prayer to the only one, capital O there, the only one who can do anything about it. The result is peace and the songs of deliverance that go along with it, does verse number seven. That's blessedness. Now you can play with Putty if you want to go home. I can tell you a couple places, Myers carries it, and so does the Walmart. But the only thing that really will help us is the Prince of Peace to give us peace, not like the peace that the world gives. So the Reverend is gonna stick his head out a bit. Don't be putty headed. As the Psalmist says, don't be stubborn. Open your life to the steadfast love of God, and God will indeed help reshape your life as it relates to confession, a beginning of the new life. I put together uh, a paraphrase of something I found, uh, and this is sort of concluding. Here's the, the start, maybe, of uh, a reflection of the sermon, the commandments for stress reduction. Now, if you don't need this, you can take a short little nap, but I'll be done here pretty quickly. Thou shalt not be perfect or even try to be. Thou shalt not try to do all things to all people. Thou shalt sometimes leave things undone. Thou shalt not spread thyself too thin. Number five, thou shalt learn to say no. <laughs> thou shalt schedule time for thyself, for thy support network. Thou shalt switch thyself off and do nothing at that moment. Thou shalt not feel guilty for doing nothing or saying no. Thou shalt be boring and unattractive at times. And especially, thou shalt not be thine own worst enemy, but thine own best friend today. I don't recommend silly putty, I'm sorry. I remind you that the Lord is here to help you in whatever your stress may be. You know, I look around our congregation Sunday after Sunday, and we all have some challenges with our health. And now probably more than we've had for a while, stress with our money. 
and our minds now are stressed to what the world is going to be related to peace. May God bless each and every one of us. Amen. Today I'm going to give you a charge and a benediction. Brothers and sisters of Peach Flow United Methodist Church, God has given to us a fresh start today. Yes, we're all sinners, but we are forgiven sinners, embraced by God, who loves us so much as any parent welcoming a child. God always wants to lift our burdens, forgive our mistakes, and fill our emptiness. So, go now to share this good news with all who need it. And may God's love surround you this week and Christ's peace dwell in you. And let's hope for around the world that the Spirit of God may triumph in the name of world peace. Amen and amen.